Good morning, and once again, I'd like to welcome you to the official opening of FACET 2023. This year, hosted by the government of Botswana in partnership with the Antwerp World Diamond Center, the AWDC. Now, before we go into the program, I'd like to indulge you in the following video, especially for those of you coming in from far and wide. This is a video that is introducing to you the Diamond of Africa, a beautiful country, Botswana. Do enjoy. Botswana, the essence of stability. We invite you to explore the spirit of strength and witness its profound impact on our people and the world. Our doors are always open for business in a safe, secure, peaceful and thriving environment. This peace and tranquility allows our people to express themselves freely, fostering a society of diverse ideas and opinions. Our people are ready and waiting to host you with beaming smiles and enchanting song and dance. Driven by our rich history and cultural heritage, we are proud to share our stories with the world. Every narrative, every challenge, every effort, whether good or bad, shapes our collective identity. The beautiful, colorful and alluring landscapes of Botswana welcome you. In this stable and majestic atmosphere, we safeguard our natural resources, preserving some of the world's most unique physical features. The sheer harmony between our people and nature is a testament to the sustainability and balance we strive to maintain for future generations. Come and meet the right business partners and investors to diversify and expand. Set up your investment in Botswana and leverage on Botswana's proximity to the wider Southern African market. Our interconnected road, rail networks, coupled with bespoke infrastructural developments, make it easy for you to open shop, network and trade in Botswana. These serve our economy and benefit our citizens positively, foiling economic growth and social progress. It is through reliable, stable governance and steadfast vision that we transform all our aspirations into tangible achievements. In a quest to make our country conducive for meetings, conferencing and multi-sectoral tourism hub, we are more than ready to welcome the world to our shores. We invite you to be part of this remarkable African story, to witness the realization of the promises made and dreams fulfilled. Together, let us forge ahead, shaping a brighter future that is grounded in peace and harmony. This is Botswana, our pride, your destination. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, welcome to Botswana. And we're certainly looking forward to hosting you in our country. Now, following the first installment of FACET 2023, which was held in Belgium last year, the conversation continues this year, right here in Botswana, under the theme Motswedi Wakumo, Diamonds for Change. And it really is no surprise that we're seeing a country, Botswana, hosting Facets 2023. Not only because we are a leading diamond producer globally, but also because when it comes to Diamonds for Change, we are testimony to how diamonds can be used to impact citizens on the ground, how diamonds can be an agent for change. Now at this point, to officially give us welcome remarks, please help me welcome to the stage our host minister, Minister of Mineral and Energy, Honorable Lefokomwahi. A very good morning to everybody in the room. Good morning. It's a mindset change. I know some of you have got my back to you, but uh, let's kick on. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Botswana, Dr. Eric Mokwezi Masisi, President of the European Commission 
Red Charles Mitchell, President of the Antwerp World Diamond Center, Mr. David Gottlieb, Commissioner for Justice of the European Commission, Didier Reinders, Minister of Mining from African Diamond Producing Countries, Ministers from different ministries in the Government of Botswana, members of the AWDC Board of Directors, CEO of AWDC, Ari Epstein, Ambassador of Botswana to the Kingdom of Belgium, Excellency Masakwa Masira Mwamba, Captains of Industry, distinguished guests, members of the Fourth Estate, ladies and gentlemen, once again, a very good morning to you all. Director of Ceremonies, His Excellency President Masisi, Ministers, distinguished guests, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to the second edition of FASA's Diamond Conference. The first edition of this conference was held in Antwerp, Belgium in September 2022. And judging by the heartwarming turnout at last year's and now this year's, which is oversubscribed, over 400 people here, it is clear that I'm welcoming you here today, an assembly of determined and resolute friends who have the interests of the diamond industry at heart. FASAS 2023 is under the theme Motswedi Wakumo, Diamonds for Change. I want to believe by now we all know that Motswedi Wakumo can be likened to a water spring which in Setswana is looked as a source of life. True to the spirit of the theme, Botswana has grown from a nation that only a few decades ago used to be unsure of its capacity to hold events of this magnitude and global reach to a country that is now a regular host to big events. Such a rapid growth is only but a testament of the transforming impact of diamonds to this country's economy. Considering the significance of this theme and its meaning to my country, Botswana, and seeing that this is only the second edition of FASA's Diamond Conference, I would like to extend a special welcome to our international guests, especially to those who are coming to Botswana for the first time. I wish to take this moment to invite you, now and perhaps in future, to take a tour of the country, to visit the museums, national archives, our streets, and countryside, to appreciate firsthand what positive impact this industry that you love so much has had in uplifting the livelihoods of Botswana. It is therefore my hope and prayer that we will be seeing more of you in the near future, perhaps in a private capacity. Speaking in the context of today's theme, it is without a doubt when I say to you that Botswana is a tapestry of wonder and awe, waiting to be experienced and to inspire. Beyond the confines of this conference venue, we promise you an experience that you will love and cherish for as long as you live. It is waiting for you to take that first step. The successes that have come to this country through the Diamonds for Development principle of our forefathers enabled succession of visionary leadership have not all overshadowed our social ethos, the principle of Boto, a humane social value which recognizes that I am because you are. I believe, therefore, that you'll find an interact both at this conference and in the country at large with people that will give you nothing but warmth, friendship, and love. Unsurprisingly so, as diamonds themselves have grown to become a valued and cherished symbol of love. The director of ceremony is drawing to a close. It is thus both an honor and a pleasure for me, and on behalf of the government of Botswana at, and Botswana at large, to welcome you all to FASES 2023 Diamond Conference. The government of Botswana is indeed honored to have collaborated with Antwerp Diamond, World Diamond Center to hold this conference on the African continent. In June 2022, during a tour of Europe, His Excellency President Masisi met with the president of the AWDC and officials of the AWDC. It was at that meeting that His Excellency shared Botswana's vision to derive more value from all streams of the diamond pipeline and the country's willingness to work with partners who share this ideal. We are happy to have found in AWDC a friend we can work with and welcome them to Botswana. Ladies, guests, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I wish you a fruitful conference and a pleasant stay in Botswana. 
I thank you for coming to Botswana and for your valuable attention. Thank you. Pula. Now at this point, without any further ado, I'd like to welcome our next speaker, who is a guest speaker, the President of the European Council, His Excellency Dr. Charles Mitchell, who could, not be who could not join us here this morning, but will be addressing us virtually. May you please uh, indulge in his speech at the screens. Your Excellency, dear Sisi, my friends, ladies and gentlemen, you today because Botswana, the valued, Botswana is a valued friend and a reliable partner of the European Union. That's why I'm pleased that FACET 2023 is taking place in your country in Gaborol. The EU has a solid partnership with Botswana and together we are supporting your journey from a natural resource-based economy to a manufacturing economy that brings added value. And that's why we are working to harness the green and digital transitions. We are working to diversify economies and create more jobs. And just two weeks ago, we held the first ever Botswana European Union Business Forum to foster economic development and partnerships. Private sector investment is also vital to sustaining your economy, along with your commitment to democracy and stability and, of course, your strategic location in Southern Africa. That's why, dear President, you remember that I immediately supported your ambition to host the Secretariat of the Kimberley process. Ladies and gentlemen, the diamond industry is a powerful engine for economic and social development, and through the help of Antwerp, both Belgium and the European diamond industry are working to foster transparency, due diligence, and compliance. Yet, conflict diamonds have fueled many of Africa's most devastating civil wars. And natural resources should never finance war or human rights abuses. Rather, they should breathe life into peace and prosperity and economic development. And this was exactly the spirit that embodied the Kimberley process when it was launched more than 20 years ago. But today, this initiative faces unprecedented challenges. Russia's war against Ukraine is making it hard for this process to deliver on its main goal. And meaningful reform is needed. This includes, in my opinion, strengthening the definition of conflict diamonds. The G7 and EU, including Belgium, we are committed to taking coordinated action to curb Russia's earnings for the diamond trade and to stop funding its war against Ukraine. And this includes a system of controls to make sure these measures work. That's the way forward, to break the link between conflicts and diamonds. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, in Botswana, you did remarkable work during your chairmanship of the Kimberley Process last year. And as host of the Kimberley Process Secretariat, your leadership will help to keep the Kimberley Process effective. Together, we can make sure the diamond trade is transparent, ethical, and fair, you can count on the EU, I wish you fruitful discussions, and I thank you. It is an incredible privilege at this moment to invite His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Botswana, Dr. Mokwezi Eric Gabezwe Masi. May we all rise as he makes it to the stage. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Kindly take your seats. I wish to, on this bright Tuesday morning, extend a warm welcome to all of you to Haboroni, the global capital of diamonds. The global capital of diamonds, in case you didn't hear it where we're meeting for the second edition of the facets conference themed Mutredi Wakumo, Diamonds for Change. It's an honor for me to perform the official opening of this important conference, the outcomes of which will contribute to shaping the future of the diamond industry 
in the world. Let us all know and remember that diamonds are Botswana and Botswana is diamonds. We as a people and a country are inextricably linked to diamonds. I'd like to extend my deepest gratitude to the Antwerp World Diamond Center for partnering with us to make this conference a reality. Delivering a at the inaugural Facets Conference 2022 held in Antwerp. As we gather on the African soil, we recognize the significance of this continent in the world of diamonds. Global diamond production for 2022 stood at just over US dollars 16 billion with 65.8% of that production sourced from Africa. <clears throat> Africa not only yields 65.8% of the world's natural diamonds, but also holds the potential to reshape the industry's narrative, making it a force for positive transformation and sustainable growth. The theme of this conference, Diamonds for Change, is a testament to the profound impact that these gems can have on our nations, on our people, and our shared future. In Botswana, we have experienced this impact firsthand. Our journey over the past decade stands as a testament to how diamonds can be an agent for change can be catalysts for progress and vehicles for economic and social upliftment. From the foundation of our economic diversification to the enactment enchantment of our social fabric, diamonds have played a pivotal role in shaping our nation's destiny. Yet, as we gather here today, we recognize that the path to sustainable change is not without its challenges. The diamond industry, like any other, must grapple with complexities that arise from a rapidly changing global landscape. Economic shifts, technological advancements, and evolving consumer preferences create a dynamic environment that demands adaptability. Therefore, it is our responsibility as diamond-producing countries and key stakeholders to navigate these challenges with wisdom, with foresight, and collaboration as well as ensuring that the industry's positive impact resonates far into the future. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, our commitment to sustainable change begins with responsible practices across the entire diamond value chain. From responsible mining, techniques that safeguard the environment, to ethics, training practices and empower communities. We must set the standard for integrity and social responsibility. We must also center our discussions on the diamond producing nations that bear the weight of this responsibility. These nations are not just stakeholders. They are custodians of an industry that has the potential to uplift their people, create jobs and foster sustainable growth. By fostering partnerships that are built on trust, mutual respect and shared objectives, we can ensure that the benefits of this industry are distributed equitably, thus leaving no one behind. It's important for us to delve deeper into the concept of sustainability in diamond mining. Sustainability is not merely a buzzword, it's a cornerstone of our collective responsibility as stewards of this precious resource. Sustainable mining practices encompass various dimensions, including environmental preservation, ethical labor, and community development. In pursuit of this objective, we must invest in research and innovation. Cutting edge exploration and mining technologies can minimize the impact on the environment. From drone assisted surveying to advanced water management systems, these innovations are not just investments. They are a commitment to preserving the natural world for generations to come. 
Furthermore, ethical trading is another cornerstone of sustainability in the diamond industry. We must ensure that every single diamond that reaches the market has been sourced and processed under conditions that respect the dignity of workers and protect their rights. The Kimberley Process Certification Scheme, which seeks to prevent the trade of conflict diamonds, is a crucial step in this direction. However, we must go further. Distinguished guests, transparency and traceability are vital components in the assurances that we as diamond producing countries must provide to our global customers. Blockchain technology with its immutable ledger can provide consumers with guarantee that their diamonds have been ethically sourced. It empowers consumers to make informed choices and encourages responsible practices throughout the supply chain. Our commitment to social responsibility must extend beyond ethical trading to community development. Mining communities often located in remote and economically disadvantaged areas deserve to share in the benefits of the diamond trade. Through community engagement and investment in education, in healthcare and infrastructure, we can transform mining regions into thriving, sustainable communities. As you all are aware, innovation is the lifeblood of any industry, and the diamond sector is by no means any exception. The challenges we face are not insurmountable. The opportunities waiting to be unlocked. And it is through innovation that we can address these challenges and build a more sustainable, responsible, and prosperous diamond industry. Emerging technologies such as nanotechnology hold promise in diamond processing. Nanodiamonds, tiny diamond particles, have a range of applications from medical imaging to quantum computing. By exploring these novel avenues, we can broaden the scope of the diamond industry and create new economic opportunities. This, my friends, is mindset change. As we embrace innovation and its transformative potential within the diamond industry, we must also address a pressing concern, the growing threat of synthetic or lab-grown. They claim they're diamonds, but they're lab-grown, those things. These man-made so-called gems have rapidly grained ground in the market, posing both challenges and opportunities for the industry. At first glance, the rise of LGDs, as I will refer to them from now on, may seem like a formidable challenge to the natural diamond industry. However, the key to maintaining a thriving market for natural diamonds lies in effective segmentation and marketing. Segmentation in this context refers to the practice of categorizing diamonds based on their origin, whether natural or, yes, from a petri dish. It aims to preserve natural diamonds as a premium product that commands a significantly higher price per carat than the LGDs. This differentiation is primarily driven by marketing strategies and the ability to appeal to a distinct group of customers. In essence, the battle between natural and lab-grown is not just a matter of chemical composition. It is about perception, consumer preference, and the emotional connection that diamonds hold. Natural diamonds have a rich history, symbolizing love, commitment, and enduring beauty. They are the embodiment of nature's wonder. They are forged deep, very deep, within the Earth's in the Earth's belly over millions of years. 
This story, this narrative, is a powerful marketing tool that sets natural diamonds apart from the microwave diamonds. As an industry, we must capitalize on this narrative. We should not merely compete on price, but also highlight the unique and impeccable qualities of natural diamonds. These gems are not just carbon crystals. They are the result of geological processes that have shaped our very planet. They carry with them a legacy of wonder and awe that no laboratory can replicate, however hard you try. As we continue on our journey to shape a brighter future for the diamond industry, let us remain steadfast in our commitment to natural diamonds. Let us embrace innovation as a tool to strengthen our position rather than a threat to our existence. By doing so, we can ensure that the allure and enchantment of our natural diamonds continue to shine brightly, transcending generations and captivating the hearts of people the world over. Distinguished guests, let us also not forget and fail to recognize the human element of our industry. Our success depends on the talent and dedication of the individuals who work tirelessly in the mines, in the laboratories, and the marketplaces. It is our duty to nurture and empower the next generation of diamond professionals. In very many diamond producing nations, the industry provides a vital source of employment and economic stability. However, we must ensure that these opportunities are accessible to all, regardless of gender or background. By promoting diversity and inclusivity, we enrich our industry with fresh perspectives and foster an environment of creativity and resilience. As we chart this course towards a sustainable, responsible, and innovative diamond industry, we recognize the importance of global partnerships and collaboration. Challenges such as climate change, responsible sourcing, and ethical labor are not confined to borders. They are global issues that require collective action. And through collaboration between governments, industry leaders, civil society organizations, and consumers, we can amplify our impact. Initiatives like the Responsible Jewelry Council and the Diamond Development Initiative have made significant strides in promoting ethical practices and sustainable development within the industry. We must continue to support and strengthen such initiatives. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we stand at a pivotal moment in history, history of the diamond industry. Our choices today will shape the future of this sector, influencing not only economic outcomes, but also the well-being of countless individuals and communities. The diamond industry holds immense potential, not only to shine brightly, but also to illuminate the path towards a more sustainable and equitable world. Together, we can ensure the diamonds we cherish today continue to sparkle in the future where diamonds for change are more than just words. They are a beacon of hope and progress across the globe. Looking at the agenda of the conference and the program that lies ahead, it promises a rich tapestry of keynote speeches, dialogues, and networking opportunities. These moments are not just opportunities for knowledge exchange, they are stepping stones towards a more inclusive and resilient diamond industry. However, let us recognize the significance of the second day dedicated to empowering the next generation of African diamond professionals. As we equip them with knowledge, skills, and a sense of purpose, we lay the foundation for a legacy of sustainable change that will echo through generations. And in conclusion, I wish to thank you most profusely for your presence here today in my country, Botswana. May our deliberations inspire action 
And may our actions pave the way for a brighter and more responsible and more innovative future for the diamond industry and the world at large. At this point, I wish to stop and thank you for your very kind attention. Pula. The official opening ceremony will be coming to a close as right now I'm just about to invite uh, somebody who will be giving us closing remarks. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and help me welcome to the stage the Antwerp World of Diamonds Center CEO, Mr. Ari Epstein. May we please give him a round of applause. It is my great pleasure as the co-host of this event and on behalf of the Antwerp World Diamond Center, its board of directors and the diamond community we represent in Belgium to welcome you to FACETS 2023 Diamonds for Change. Allow me to go back in time for just a brief moment. A little over a year ago, we had the honor of having President Massisi officially opening our conference in Antwerp, Belgium facets, diamonds in the age of consumer. Botswana, alongside many representatives of African producing countries such as Angola, Namibia, Tanzania and the DRC, was well represented with a large delegation including my co-host for the next two days, the Honorable Minister Moagi. Before the conference in Antwerp ended, both of us agreed that the next edition of FACETS should take place on African soil, in Botswana. We shook hands, said Mazal, and here we are today, ladies and gentlemen. I am delighted and grateful that our partnership with the Botswana government has led to this moment. My sincere gratitude and appreciation goes out to President Masisi, the Honorable Minister Moagi, Her Excellency Madame Wamba, heading the Embassy of Botswana in Belgium, the Ministry of Minerals and Energy of Botswana, Botswana's Diamond Hop, and the AWDC Board, management and staff for their relentless and tireless efforts, energy, and most importantly, their commitment to bring about this conference. I would also like to acknowledge and salute the contribution of the present Belgian diamond companies in Botswana. That is, of course, Bonas, Dali Diamonds, Royalton Diamonds Botswana, Pluchnik Diamonds, Rosy Blue Facets, Taché Limited, Zebra Diamond Company, HB Antwerp, to Botswana's beneficiation strategy. May you all be successful long-term partners of Botswana. I would also like to acknowledge the presence of Mr. Bonas, who has so graciously, ag graciously agreed to join us here today. Thank you very much for your presence. Also, thank you, Mr. Martin Rappaport, for joining us, and I look forward to your participation and to our discussions. You are a longtime friend, and I appreciate your leadership and everything you do to support the industry and the industry's needs. I, of course, also want to salute the Beers representatives, Ms. Titi, and I look forward to discussing our common cause in the coming days. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no better place in the world for this FACET 2023 conference than Botswana. <clears throat> Mr. President and conference, Botswana is a paradigm par excellence for responsible national resource management for the benefit of its population and as a backbone for the integrity of the global rough supply matrix. Botswana is a pace setter 
showcasing the professionalism of its Ministry of Mineral Resources, Green Technology and Energy Security, its various government departments, and its good governance and accountability. Dear guests, where FACETS 2023 is a refreshing take on the traditional conference as it's known in the Western world, this principle of gathering stakeholders in an open conversation is in fact not new at all. It's a very well-known principle on the African continent in the traditional Kotla, still widely used in this country and in other parts of Africa. Since the dawn of mankind, people in Africa have gathered, typically and symbolically, under a tree to talk, discuss, resolve issues, and reach consensus on a common path and actions for the future. As you can see, dear guests, FACETS 2023 honors this old age concept by literally and figuratively setting the stage for an open and inclusive dialogue on how diamonds can be agents of change on so many critical levels. Botswana, producing 22.5 million carats of diamonds last year, valued at 4.8 billion US dollars, is the world's largest diamond producer. Like you very well said, capital of diamonds. Over the past decade, Mr. President, Botswana has been striving to shape its destiny and drive its development. This trend, this trend has been impressively consolidated and actively driven further by you, Mr. President. The country is a role model on the African continent and an inspiration for many other African producing nations. Like Belgium, home to a close to 600 year extraordinary, innovative and multinational diamond trading community, Botswana is a country that takes its leadership position extremely seriously. It is doing so with a clear vision in mind to increase local value addition and boost sustainable national socio-economic development and diversification through its natural resources. In short, to lead by example. Ladies and gentlemen, I understate the seriousness of the conjuncture when I say these times are trying times. The only zero-sum game of our industry is synthetic diamonds. Antwerp is all about transparency and we are not dubious in our messaging when it comes to this. We are the only diamond center in the world that doesn't give a platform to synthetic diamonds. Botswana and Antwerp are fully aligned on this. We are We are at war with this. We are dealing in a valuable, limited product of nature, whilst they are cheating the consumer when charging $5,000 for a $200 product. Our love for Africa is real. It's real love, not synthetic love. But, of course, it would be singularly irresponsible of me not to set up the framework of our impending conversations and debates with a couple of framing thoughts with your permission. Why are we talking? Why are we discussing new protocols and methodologies for running our business? Back in the late 90s, when blood diamonds hit the news, increasing criticism, protests, and threats of boycotts and demonstrations in front of the likes of the big brands created an industry crisis. 
We were then in the crosshairs as we are today. Responding responsibly and in collaboration with many stakeholders, Antwerp, on behalf of the global diamond trade, developed the concept and then the technical platform and reporting mechanisms of the Kimberley process. For some, the KP is not perfect. It does not solve every problem. But it provided a license to operate for more than 20 years. It was one of the first, if not the first, industry self-regulating mechanisms and was acknowledged as such. It was viable, implementable, affordable, Dear conference, let us take that spirit into our discussions. The G7, in the context of the war in Ukraine, has expressed its most serious concern, its commitment and intention to ensure an industry tra tra trade channel platform that reassures consumers and their governments as to international diamond flows. And these flaws are very important. The G7 accounts for a very significant portion, up to at least 70% of diamond jewelry sold globally. Dear friends, our deliberations and decision is about protecting the image and reputation of natural diamonds with the consumer. It is about protecting, enhancing, and maximizing the revenue flows from natural diamonds back to the countries, back to the producers. Today, more than anything, it is about protecting the long-term value of African underground diamond assets for the future social economic development of the African diamond producing countries. Our conference is about the global diamond and jewelry industry, but it is first and foremost about protecting, promoting, validating and respecting African and the other non-conflict producers, and then extending that protection downstream to all components of the value chain. This extends to the consumer point of sales where cash primes the entire current and future diamond pipeline. Economic challenges and geopolitical tensions are testing our resilience as an industry. In the balance is our ability to adapt and change, to question the status quo and to seize opportunities to grow stronger with every crisis successfully battled. That is when true leadership emerges and we are privileged to stand side by side with our Botswana and Africa partners in this matter. Our program speaks for itself, ladies and gentlemen. Facets 2023 will address increasing knowledge, sharing and capacity building, improving transparency and traceability, and strengthening and future-proofing diamond economies, referencing testimony on past achievements, and sharing insights on our ambitions for the future along the way. Diamonds for Change also relates to how our industry actively contributes to enabling change through innovation in a variety of domains such as climate change, empowering women, boosting local entrepreneurship and embracing diversity as a strength, not a weakness. In a shared industry vision, events like these, dear friends, are not choreographed for show. They offer a very real, practical, and tangible opportunity 
for our global multinational community to meet, to discuss, brainstorm, and formulate policy, to put aside our differences and discuss how we can move forward towards a common goal, and that is securing and safeguarding the future of our industry. Incidentally, before traveling here, I did some shopping for foods and bits and pieces. I bought a few chocolate bars in Antwerp at a leading European retailer, Obertan. These separate chocolate bars were stamped cocoa from Tanzania, cocoa from Uganda, cocoa from Costa Rica, cocoa from Peru. Starbucks buys its coffee beans from principally 30 producing nations and tells you if it is coffee from Brazil, Costa Rica, Peru, or Puerto Rico. Nestlé sells around $80 billion of food products that is close to the value of our retail business from around 400 factories around the world. That's chocolate, that's coffee. How about diamonds? How about diamonds from Botswana? Almost everything traceable through blockchain, like very wisely said by you, Mr. President. We know the inputs for traceability and transparency may require policy intervention, may require technical and technological solutions, may require investment of time and resources, and of course may also require inclusive and collective actions. Let us get to work. Ladies and gentlemen, FACES 2023 is about Africa and Canada, about a global consumer, including millennials and Generation Z, which accounted for over 70% of global luxury goods in 2022, and about our future license to operate. Let us, let us lead, ladies and gentlemen, not lose. Let us anticipate and activate, not vegetate. Let us innovate, not suffocate or stagnate. To conclude, dear friends, I would like to take the opportunity to thank each and every one here who took the time to be with us today, thereby demonstrating their commitment toward building a sustainable future for the next generations of African and international miners, traders and manufacturers, jewelry designers and retailers. While thanking the Belgian Prime Minister and the G7 for their input, attention and concern for the global diamond trade, together with His Excellency President Masisi. I warmly invite you all to join in a hopefully consequential conference that encourages stakeholders to exchange concerns, hopes and ideas that can be distilled into a commercially viable, unencumbering program embraced by the G7 and markets around the world. Let us work together so that diamonds, nature's most precious, most extraordinary, exciting element that binds the future of many Africans to the world's most powerful symbol of love, romance, trust and commitment, can live up to its true planet-enhancing purposes. Motsmegi Wakumo, Diamonds for Change. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.